Hello everyone, and welcome to a new episode of What's New in Laravel. I am Mohammed Saeed, and in this episode, I'm gonna share with you the awesome things the Laravel community and team has been working on lately. We have updates on Laravel Echo, updates on Laravel Cashier, updates on the framework, as well as updates on Faber and Forge. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's start with an update on Laravel Echo. If you are not familiar with Laravel Echo, it's a JavaScript library maintained by the Laravel team, and it allows you to listen to broadcasted events from your Laravel application. You can subscribe to channels and add callbacks that get invoked whenever a certain event is sent from your Laravel backend. Here I have a simple front end that has Laravel Echo installed and configured. Using Echo, we subscribe to the user channel and listen to two events, new episode and new friend request sent. Whenever any of these events are broadcasted from our Laravel backend, the corresponding callback will be invoked by Echo. And in both callbacks, we call this add notification method that simply displays the message inside a list inside our HTML. If we take a look at the new episode event that will be dispatched or broadcasted from our Laravel application, this event has a public property called message, and this is the message that will be displayed to the user whenever this event is fired. And the new friend request sent event is similar. It also has a message that will be displayed to the user whenever the event is fired. Inside our routes file, we have the route that displays the welcome view that has our script here. And we have two more routes to dispatch the events for the new episode and new friend request sent. If we go to the browser and use our root route here, any event that's triggered by the framework will be broadcasted inside this view. So let's go ahead and visit the new episode route to dispatch the event. And we can go back here to see that the event was dispatched, was detected by the front end using Laravel Echo and the message was displayed. If we visit the other route, which is for the new friend request sent event, and we go back here, we can see that the new message was displayed in the front end as well. As you can see, each time I want to listen to an event, I have to register a callback. This looks okay for just two events, but it won't look good the more events we add to our application. And for that reason, Laravel Echo had a new method added that allows us to listen to any event. So instead of calling lesson on each event separately, we're going to use the new method, which is called lesson to all. This new method accepts a callback and two parameters are passed to this callback, the name of the event and the data passed with the event. So inside our callback here, we will check if the data contains a message attribute. And in that case, we are going to call the add notification method and pass the message from the data. Now, if we go to the browser and refresh this view and visit the new episode route to trigger the new episode event, we can see that the front end listened to this event. Let's hit the other route and we can see that it listened to this other event as well. So using a single method here with a single callback registered, we can listen to all events broadcasted from our backend and display it to the user. Now let's switch to the framework core and take a look at the newly added artisan command that allows us to delete all data from the failed jobs table. This failed jobs table stores information about all failed jobs that are triggered from our application. And if you are not very careful, this job or this table can grow in size and eat all the desk space. With the newly added queue prone failed artisan command, we can delete jobs that are older than 24 hours automatically. And of course, you can pass any number of hours to retain the job data in that table. Now, all you need to do is to run this command on regular basis using cron or the Laravel scheduler, and you can set back and relax knowing that the failed jobs table will not grow in size and eat all your available disk space. Next, we have a new quality of life addition to the file system component of the framework. It simply allows you to configure a desk on demand or on the fly. And why would you need that? Typically, if you configure a desk, a file system desk in your Laravel application, 
the and re you resolve it or you use it in your code base laravel is going to create an instance of this file system desk and cache it inside the framework so the next time you need to use this same instance laravel is not going to create a new instance it will give you the cached instance but what if you need a disk instance that has a different route or any other different configuration than the one that you configured in your file system.php configuration file for that you will need to purge the existing instance stored in the laravel cache you need to purge it and configure or change the configurations in runtime and then create a new instance of the desk so you get the new instance with the new configuration with the new addition you don't need to do that anymore so to create a file system desk on the fly all you need to do is use the storage facade and call the build method this method accepts the path to the root of this desk so we can use the storage path helper and configure any custom root that we want for our desk for example, let's point it at the logs directory inside the storage directory of our Laravel application. And now Laravel is going to create a desk instance on the fly for us to use. We can store this desk inside a variable, so we call it desk, and then we can use it just like any other regular desk in our Laravel application. So we can get the laravel.log file for example. You can also configure the on-demand desk by passing an array of configurations. So instead of passing the path to the root of this desk, we can pass an array and configure this desk however we wish. I can see this becoming useful in multi-tenant applications where each tenant had their own file system desk. You can create desks for each tenant on demand and provide the tenant with their own desk in runtime. Now let's move to Laravel Cacher. Another quality of life addition was made to this incredible library that allows you to configure the Stripe webhooks automatically by calling an artsync command. Because we all forget this step when configuring a new application that uses Laravel Cacher, and even if we remember it, it's hideous to do it manually. So Laravel Cacher will now ship with a new artsync command that will configure the webhooks for you by default or automatically. All you need to do is call PHP artsync cashier webhook and cashier will create a webhook on Stripe on your Stripe account and subscribe to the events needed by cashier to function. You can set a custom URL endpoint for the webhook and you can also set the API version, the Stripe API version that you want to use. And there is a disabled flag that you can use to disable the webhook immediately after creation so you may only enable it when you are ready to test your application. Make sure you upgrade to the latest version of Laravel Cacher in order for you to be able to use this new arts and command. Next, we will move to Laravel Vapor. And for those of you who don't know, Laravel Vapor is a platform that allows you to deploy your application to the AWS serverless infrastructure. And deploying your application to AWS involves a lot of steps, several steps. With Laravel Vapor, we take care of that behind the scenes you, so you don't have to worry about it. We have recently made a lot of internal changes to speed up the deployment process of your applications. And we do that internally by using the new patches, the drop patching feature of the Q component of the Laravel framework. And by using this, we can run several steps, several deployment steps in parallel and cut out the time, the total time of deploying your applications. If you haven't tried Vapor yet, head over to vapor.laravel.com and create an account. Also make sure to check the official Laravel blog where we regularly publish posts on all things Vapor. Not only posts about new things coming to Vapor, but also tips and tricks that will help you deploy your applications to Vapor with the best configurations possible. Last but not least, we have made a change to Laravel Forge that enables TLS 1.3 in all newly created servers by default. TLS or Transport Layer Security is a protocol that protects the data moving between your Laravel servers or your servers in general to several clients like browsers and mobile applications and so on. The new TLS 1.3 enhances the security and also introduces a simplified handshake which improves the overall performance of the data exchange between the server and the client. If you are not familiar with Laravel Forge, it's an amazing tool that helps you provision and manage servers. 
head over to forge.laravel.com and register an account today. And that's all I have for you today. These are all the recent updates that happened to the framework and the different products and packages in the Laravel ecosystem. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to receive updates whenever we post a new video. And that's it. I wish you a happy day, happy coding, and hope to see you later.